sauce that we use here, they used to sell no salt added. They stopped selling. Then they sold low sodium. Then they stopped selling that. Well, they didn't really stop selling it. They just took low sodium off the label. It's not as if you market things so healthy, they don't, people don't they buy don't it, you know? It. People are very visual. From the Pritikin Longevity Center in Miami, Florida, welcome to the Healthier Everyday Podcast, where we talk about your health, your fitness, your mindset, the food you eat, and putting it all together to create an amazing lifestyle. In this episode, Kara and Vince talk about the way that food looks and how it can influence your appetite. They talk about how food companies use different color in their packaging and ingredients to get attention. They also discuss the ways you can use the look and feel of different foods to your advantage in order to stick to a nutrition plan. Kara Bernstein has over 20 years of experience in the nutrition field. Kara coaches her clients for issues such as weight loss, cardiovascular disease, gut health, and behavior modification strategies. Vincenzo Enzo Della Pola has been creating healthy and flavorful meals with Pritikin since 2007. When he's not working with Pritikin dietitians on a new recipe, he holds daily cooking classes and monthly workshops, helping people expand their creativity using healthy ingredients in the kitchen. Enjoy today's episode and don't forget to like and subscribe. I mean, there's lots of flavor in food that's going to find that color, flavor, people eat visually, right? People eat visually. If it yeah. looks good, they're going to excited about it. They're going to want to eat it. Whether it's the way you plate it, whether it's the colors you use, whether it's the height you use on the plate, there's many things you can do to incorporate, uh, you know, just that that, that, I, that that desire to want to eat that food, right? And a lot of times that food it isn't always the healthy food, right? So whether that be a bowl of Skittles that we have in front of us or this big bowl uh, or this big plate of veggie sticks that I have, you know, people may, may get excited about those colors. Listen, Chef, I saw that in front of me, and I just, um, I just want to eat it, especially that one. The watermelon radish, unbelievable, has a nice has a nice color going on in there. I'll tell you what, I was in, um, I was in Disney World like two years ago, and they were using watermelon radish on like every garnish of their plate. Like it was like, a little thin slice that they use like on top, you know, and it has a nice, really nice flavor to it. And of course, the color is just really, really incredible because it has that green skin and that fuchsia uh, on the inside. Um, you know, of course, it's not a watermelon particularly color, and not that it actually tastes like watermelon, but you had that nice little contrast of green on the outside. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's it's really cool because they actually say um, even animals, um, when they are getting attracted to, to each other, um, they, they find it's actually the male, right, that has all these, like, beautiful colors or something about them that's aesthetically pleasing that draws the animal to to the other animal. And um, I find that to be very true true with, with humans and colors and things like that. It's like we need to, to come up with ways to um, lure people to something. And, and the food industry is like a trillion dollar industry. Like they're in it to win it and make a lot of money. So they do a lot, a lot of play on colors. And um, there's a lot of psychology behind it. So, you know, I was just actually looking at your little pantry over there, chef. And obviously... <laughs> What you have in there is going to be good for you because we're in the rainbows and unicorn rainbows and unicorns place called Pritikin. But um, I was just kind of checking out the colors, and I noticed these two. We have the um, vegetable broth and a pasta, which is a whole wheat pasta, and that they were colored green. So my question is, it's like when you see green, what does that make you think of? Healthy. Healthy nature. Um, Pritikin is green everywhere right? The bag, the water bottle, the t-shirt, the wall in my office, green. <laughs> like everything is green because we are trying to bring on this notion of health. And that's just psychologically green represents health. Um, so the other thing is I, when I was looking at this, this um, radish, I was thinking about a client just yesterday. And she says to me, Kara, I need a replacement for crunchy. Like at night, I just want something crunchy. What you know? What would be a good idea? That's yeah. going to be a great idea, you right? You can keep veggie sticks in ice water for upwards to a week, and they will stay crispy and fresh, right? And just pull them out. You know, replenish the ice every other day so or so, and you get that really crunch to it. Celery, carrot, jicama. You know, in this plate we have. Uh, uh, this is actually a, called a purple ninja radish. Is the exact name of it? Ninja. The first time a vendor said, "You know, <laughs> chef, I have ninja radishes." I was like. <laughs> That's all enough said. Sign me up. Send them, <laughs> send them to me, and I want to see what they are. And then we've been ordering them ever since. Uh, they have a nice, nice, real nice, uh, you know, crunch. bright, bright color to them, uh, and a nice, nice crunch. 
If you can't find purple radishes, use regular radishes. Of course, everyone knows celery, but get out of your comfort zone and use things more than just using celery. Try using things like this candy cane beet, right? This has a really beautiful color to it. I wouldn't cook this. I would usually just try to keep keep this raw because it does you know, usually lose its color. Um, but up next to a piece of candy cane beet, we have jicama, right? And if you have this red beet, if this was a red beet next to the jicama, well, the jicama is going to be pink, right? Because the color will usually bleed into it. So, you know, just kind of be cool aware together. of that, what you're using it. So we have, you know, the option to use yellow beet, candy cane beet, red beet, whatever beet you want to use. Jicama is another great option. Carrots, the bright orange, you know, use those cr cr crunchy is, veggie sticks to get that crunch. You know, To get you the crunch and the lure of actually, that looks really pretty, so I want to eat it. But if you just had the white jicama on a white plate, Boring. maybe not so appetizing. What, what? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so one of the things that we talked about, and I'm just going to be honest, <laughs> is that we were going to have this plate of beautiful um, vegetables, colored vegetables, and right next to it, just imagine a, a glass bowl, and inside that glass bowl is full of Skittles. <laughs> Okay, it has red, it has green, it has yellow, it has orange, and it has blue, and it is bright and alluring. So I have this friend that whenever I would go to her house, you'd walk into her door, and right to the right of the door was a mantle. And on the mantle, she had this big, <laughs> big glass bowl with these beautiful Skittles in it. And what do you think the first thing that I would do when I would walk into the door? Get a handful of Skittles. And I would say, Wendy, <laughs> Why do you keep this here? Because I'm sure everybody that walks in is going to want to have Skittles. And she says, well, I just think it looks pretty. <laughs> there you go. Right? Yeah. So it's true. It does look pretty. And um, luckily, she, she, you know, I guess because it was there all the time, she didn't grab it all the time. But I noticed when people would come into her house, that would be the first thing that they would do. So a really good suggestion for people out there that, you know, want, if you want to increase your vegetable or your fruit consumption, put it in a nice bowl and put it out because if it's out, you will see it, it will look pretty and you'll want to eat it and you will. So. I mean, what's, yeah. what's wrong with Skittles though? I mean, taste the rainbow. I mean, doesn't. Taste that, the isn't rainbow. Isn't that a great thing? It's natural. Exactly. It's natural. What's wrong with Skittles? Yeah. Hmm. Look, it's a fat-free food, right? It Well, that's the <laughs> truth. That is the truth. We cannot take away the fact that Skittles are fat-free. But Skittles are 100% sugar. Yeah, exactly. Not, and not only are they sugar, by the way, um, how do you think that they create all those beautiful colors? It's a ton of food. A lot dye, of for artificial sure. food dyes and 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 nothing that's that's real or natural. For for, for a while, I remember uh, they were they were switching the uh, the tricks to like a standard like all natural um, oh, really? you know, vegetable and fruit dyes. It was no sort of like, oh, like a beta carotene or something. So, like and that. it looked like really washed out. You know, it's so, like the kids weren't excited about it, and they, the sales like dropped like really dramatically. So now they're. They shifted right back to doing like the uh, the super like high contrast of colors and blues and stuff like that because I guess it was one as wasn't as popular with kids, you know. And at they, the end of the day, um, whatever sells. And that's what it is, unfortunately. I mean, they looked at least they tried. At least they tried, but they try you know, to give they, it a whirl. Yeah, exactly. So people are in it to make money, right? And, and unfortunately, sometimes if it doesn't sell, you know, I tell people all the time. There's you know, perfect stories like the salsa that I, 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 we we use here. They used to sell no salt added, right? They stopped selling it. Then they sold low sodium. Then they stopped selling that. Well, they didn't really stop selling it. They just took low sodium off the label. So then as you market things so healthy, they don't people don't they buy don't it. You know, it. people are very visual, exactly. So whether it's being marketed by colors or marketed by big words, whatever, they, it gets your attention, right? And 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 as a chef, for me, I would say plating things in a way can make it that much more visually appealing. Color wise, you know, you get more nutrients in there to get more vitamins in there. But everything's going to make it, you know, people eat with their eyes. And, you know, if it looks exciting, people are going to want to dive right into it. Here at the Pritikin Center, it's like rainbows and unicorns. All you got to do is show up and everything is planned and prepared for you. But when you get home, get ready for those lions and tigers and bears. Whether you're racing out the door to work and skipping breakfast or glued to the Zoom call and no time for lunch, or maybe you're in retirement and every day is a holiday. The solution, you need a plan. My name is Kara. I've been a registered dietitian for over 20 years and I've helped thousands of clients create sustainable plans that stick. At the Pritikin Center, we offer a one-to-one -one remote nutrition coaching program with me. Together, we will create a customized plan that addresses your lifestyle, your health markers, and any of those derailers that lead you astray. 
Support and accountability can be the difference between finding success and constantly chasing after it. Sign up today for more information about Pritikin at Home Concierge Nutrition Program. The point is, is that colors actually mean a whole lot and, and the food industry utilizes this psychology to get us to um, eat the foods that they want us to eat. And, and we kind of do that here at Pritikin too, if you think about it, because I think one, one thing that you do, Chef, um, that is so awesome is that you really take the time to find a way to plate the food so it is very aesthetically pleasing. I mean, it would be very easy for you every single day to put, just put carrots and, and celery out. And, and, you know, again, everybody knows about carrots and celery and yeah, they're pretty orange and green, but they're, they're kind of just always around and, and they get a little bit boring. So you take exactly. it next level and you do, you know, these, these. And, I mean, if you see our salad bar, it's, it's, it's like a rainbow of colors. It's right? a I rainbow mean, of colors. And it, that's the first place it, it's front and center. And that is the first place that they go and they love it. Yeah. And, and they want to create that at home because you, they say, you know what? When I usually eat salad at home, it has like lettuce, cucumbers, and carrots in it. And then it's really boring and I do it for a couple of weeks and then I don't really want to have salad anymore. But if I put some really, you know what? Like what was the, um, you put a little black rice sometimes in the salad or- I mean, you, can, you know, one, one thing I tell people to do, not as- not, Put a little fruit in the salad. Put fruit, right? You know. Look, you can put things like crispy, crunchy, uh, you know, dried uh, toasted chickpeas, right? Right. Toasted butter Pritikin beans. Pritikin croutons, we call it, you right? You call them Pritikin croutons, uh -huh. like Pritikin peanuts, right? Like, mm -hmm. and that gives you, you know, if, if the if the satisfy if satisfying uh, crunch of a vegetable isn't giving it to you at dinner time or at nighttime when you want that crunch, hey, those are a good thing a little snack on too, right? I mean, like, and look, here here's the thing: if I look at a, a, a if I if I go look at like a handful of peanuts. And a handful of toasted chickpeas. The toasted chickpeas are literally a fraction of the calories. There's no added salt. You can get no salt added. Season them yourself. Toast them. Get them crunchy. Look, I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, you can just go ahead and cook those and eat those up as a snack for the next couple of days. Right. So what a good switch from peanuts to chickpeas. And 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 this is just something I say over and over and over again every time we're we're in in class and lecture. What's really important because when people come to Pritikin, all they want to do is the right thing. You know, they came here for a reason. And so if weight loss is a priority, then they're really just focusing on, you know, whatever, whatever is the lowest calorie dense food, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. And I remind them the, the important thing is that you actually like it, too. Exactly. <laughs> so if it's good for you and you like it, guess what? You're golden. If it's good for you and you're forcing yourself to eat it, you'll probably be able to do it for a week, maybe a month. And then after that, you're like, I don't like this. I'm not going to eat it anymore. So um, I, one of the things that I think is really, really helpful when, when we have the guests here is that we, um, we give them all sorts of variety of different types of vegetables and um, even proteins, proteins that they haven't tried before, like the sesoya and um, you know TVP and all these different textures and colors because it's something that they haven't done at home and they probably wouldn't do it if they never saw it before, but they're immersing themselves into this, um, what I call rainbows and unicorns place where everything is good for them. And like, oh, you know what? When in Rome, I'm right. just gonna try it. And so they do things that they may not normally do at home and then they realize, oh my God, this is actually good. But part of it is because how you, plate it on the plate, they, they think it's like ground meat or they, you know, they yeah. don't, they, because of the way that you make it look psychologically, it looks like, oh, I'm having like real tacos, but actually you're having soy yeah, protein, yeah, yeah, right? I mean, yeah. We, we make, just to kind of trick your brain a little bit, you know, there's things that you can do to make healthier switches. And when you pop this pretty and bubble and, and, and you're back in this real world, you know, as much as you do this program at your house, it, it, the better is better, like you say, right? Because this place is rainbows and unicorns. I mean, you know, we both work here, and I would consider both of ourselves doing this program like 80-20, right? Because life is life, and things are going to happen. But you make the best modifications to your everyday lifestyle that you can do and make that work for you and to, to where you can actually make that accomplish something that you're actually attainable goals that you're enjoying life and you're actually feeling good about yourself. Because when I go home... And, and if I choose to use a little bit of ground meat, what can I use? 
ground chuck, ground sirloin, not the best options, right? They're going to be higher in saturated fat, higher in cholesterol. So you might say, hey, maybe I could use some ground chicken breast, ground turkey breast. Well, if you could take this step further and use something like you said, the TVP, right? The TVP is, is a great meat substitute, takes on the texture of actually using ground meat. And what I'll do at my house is instead of using just straight ground tur- chicken breast or ground turkey breast, I'll put a little TVP in there too and, and, and rehydrate it in chicken broth. So now I'm just getting half the amount of actual, uh, you know, overall actual animal meat, but it all has the same texture and it all blends together. You not won't be able to. You're not able really to pick, missing much. Yeah, it, it really just absorbs the flavor, of even the chicken that it's cooking with. So whether you have the TVP pie itself, like we usually serve it here, in a soy lettuce wrap, in a bolognese sauce, in our baked ziti, it's a great meat substitute. We put jackfruit in our tacos, you know. But visually, that looks, it looks like, like meat. It looks like pulled pork, and you know, yep. we call it pulled pork tacos in, in quotations. Right. But you know, when you find things that are in quotations here, you better be aware that you know we're <laughs> usually trying meat. to trick you a little bit, you know. <laughs> But here's the thing. I saw at the grocery store the other day, plant-based butter. Plant-based butter. Like, what the heck is plant-based butter? As I'm just you know, look at it. It's just it's just some sort of oils, you know. But hey, technically, yeah, it's but plant, it's butter, it's plant, and it, and it looks based. it looks like butter, right? And it look, you know, it's just some sort of you know country crock, whatever it was. It is rebranded, country though, you crock know what I mean? Yeah, so it, it's just a matter of just. But look, it's visually appealing because it looks like it's plant-based, and plant-based is healthy, is it not? You know. And by the way, don't, don't they're only going to look at what's in the front. So if it says in really big letters, plant-based, that's all they need to Sold. see. Sold. Sold. <laughs> and, the, and the truth is, is that what we really, really need to look at is what's in the small print, what's on yeah. the label. I mean, I'm looking at this label right now. I, I have my contacts in, and I can't even read it <laughs> because the point is so small. And that's the point, by the way, is that... Sometimes the manufacturers of the foods, they put stuff in really small print because they don't really want you to read it. Yep. Um, and they put stuff in really big print because it's true. It could be gluten-free. It doesn't mean that it's healthy. So it's not that they're lying, right? It's just that they're focusing on things that are alluring to you and attracting to you and then not focusing on the things that they don't really want you to see, like how much sodium is in the food or how much added sugar is in there. We'll just say it's gluten-free and fat-free and we're good to go. Yeah. What's the deal? Yeah, go ahead. ahead. I was gonna ask, what's the deal with uh, veggie pasta? Great question. Because they call it that green, right? Yeah, so there's this veggie pasta and actually I'm going to Publix today. We do a- The spinach and tomato powder pasta? Exactly, so (laughs) so, um, every Wednesday uh, I do a grocery store scavenger hunt and I bring a bunch of guests and we go through the aisles and and I send them to find certain items that are Pritikin, um, Pritikin friendly or Pritikin perfect or meet our guidelines. And um, we inevitably, we end up in the pasta aisle and I ask them to find a pasta that is Pritikin friendly. Okay. okay. And so again, eyes, colors, words, whatever. There's this one pasta and it's, I'm not gonna say the name because I don't wanna throw them under the bus, but it says <laughs> it, in really it, big letters, Ranzoni, <laughs> It says really big letters, super greens. Like the, it's like the spaghetti, so it's like lengthwise, right? Okay. And the whole length of the box says super greens. And what do you think people go to when at the grocery store? Like oh, they this, are like this oh, this one healthier. looks good. I'm like yeah, that that does look good. Let's check it out. And we and then we turn it over in the fine print. The very first ingredient is durum wheat, and durum wheat is not whole wheat. It's a refined wheat. Yeah. And then, like somewhere down the line, maybe the fifth ingredient, it'll have like a um, a spinach puree or a tomato puree. It's like powdered, dehydrated. Yeah. It's like the same stuff they're using. Like you know, my my older brother was tricked and thinking he was feeding his daughter something healthy. I was talking to him a few years ago, and he's like, "Yeah, I give her these veggie straw things instead oh, of Oh, the chips. veggie straws. I was like, yeah. he's like, it's oh, oil. They're, they're it's literally oil. just like, yeah, you know, they're not any healthy, right? Like they're, they're high not. in salt. They're usually. Uh, but they're colorful. They're colorful. Yeah. But they're usually they're to deceive you thinking that, you know. It's so true. That's yeah. a really good example. So you have to so, be aware of that. Yeah. So anyway, so back to the super greens. Um, the truth is, is that when you look at the pasta, it's very orange and very green. So it looks like there's spinach in there and tomato and peppers and all that. It's just a little powdery substance. There's very little fiber. It's totally a refined and processed wheat but it's, it's definitely very appealing to the eye. And then I move them over to, to another box and um, I'm like, what you really need to look for is the word whole grain. And when you see that, you're good to go. So there, there's a lot of little nuances that go on um, in grocery stores and um, everywhere we go, because at the end of the day, 
people are trying to make money, yeah. right? So it's really, really important that we we pay attention, we're aware, and we're very mindful of what's around us because if we're not, we are going to fall into traps. So obviously, I think Pritikin is a really good place to come. So you can learn all sorts of tips and tricks and strategies from from so many different departments. I mean, I feel like we work very well together, Chef, because you're really creative in creating meals that taste really good. And then you utilize the nutrition staff to help you come up with um, the, the types of foods that you could use. And then you figure out the amounts, like when you do the sour cream or the light cream cheese instead of the cream, or you just add a little bit of oil and then you added some rice vinegar or some broth, like all of these different ideas, we just kind of come together. And then we, we create these meals that are actually really, really good, very colorful, and they taste good. And I think if, if we could figure that out, um, then as the guests leave here, they have so much more of a chance to be successful. Exactly. Um, especially I mean, when they follow us and we speak to them after, right? With I, our remote sessions. I tell people all the time, I mean, have rainbow of different fruit, vegetables, grains, beans, whatever it is, right? And, 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 and the more variety you're having, the more flavors and textures and vitamins you're gonna take all in the same time. And, and, and then it's gonna expose you to new textures that you might not have been used to. Maybe you never had this certain vegetable or this certain grain before, or this certain bean. Maybe you actually like it now and expose you to try something else and encourage you to try something new, right? So, you know, have Absolutely. red rice, have black rice, have farro, have red quinoa, have all these good grains out there. And like you said, whole grains are better. Um, you know, try to use, try to avoid using those, you know, those more refined things like white rices and things like that and, and white, white flours. So when we're using products here at Pritikin, we try to focus, like Kara said, on using more whole grain. So, you know, if you're looking to use beans, you can certainly take some, you know, substitutes and or, or, or some shortcuts and use, you know, canned beans as long as it's no salt added. Eden's a good brand. You can find those, comp that company sells about 10 different kinds of, you know, whole wheat, uh, whole wheat, it was my mind. You got, you got wheat in my brain here. They sell about 10 different kinds of no salt added uh, canned Eden, beans. Yeah. And, you know, black beans, butter beans, whatever it is. Like I said, use those in stews, use those in your salad, whether you want to keep them like that or, 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 or toast them. It makes a lot of flavor to your to, to, to your dishes. So you have to you have to look at our fruit in the morning and see that we have like 16 different kinds of fruit. Do we expect you to eat 16 different no. kinds of fruit? No. We just give we you variety. We intentionally give you that big variety. You know, people are like, Jeff, what is this? A gooseberry? Like, yeah, that's it's a gooseberry. It's a, oh, yeah. yeah. People so, are so, into the gooseberries. They're sweet, been tangy, me. you know, they're like a little tart, you know, it depends which one you get, but it's a nice flavor. People are like, you know, I never had that before. So right. yeah, and right. that's if I, I did my job. Properly, if we, hopefully we, we got you out of your comfort zone while you were here and, and tried something new, something exciting, something that made you go home and be like, you know what, I want to do that. Not be like, oh, Pritikin's making me do that. No, I want to do that because this is what I want to do now. And right. I actually enjoy doing it and right. enjoy eating it. Right. Um, I, I want to ask one more thing before you get to your mindful eating lunch. Yes, it's starting at one o'clock. We got about 14 minutes. 14 minutes. And the mindful eating lunch, and for anybody who doesn't know, is where you talk about strategies that anybody can implement right away that that helps them whether it's portion control or eating you know solving the issue of eating too fast but i want to talk about one more thing that vince you mentioned in your cooking classes and that's the egg beaters oh i was gonna uh, actually i was gonna talk about that that was like on my membrane tony yeah so yeah, egg beaters are just uh you know they're 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 colored with you know beta carotene naturally from carrot right they're thickened with a little bit of xanthan gum as well to make you think like you're pouring whole eggs out of that carton. It's 99% egg whites. So in that sense, they actually made that modification and, 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 and it's actually beneficial, especially in our sense that it, it, egg whites are tremendously better to use than egg beaters in certain circumstances because they hold things better like, like whole eggs will do. But truthfully, for people who don't know that otherwise, like if you're trying to bread things, Egg beaters are the way to go over egg whites, but it's essentially this using the same thing. 99% egg whites or 100% egg whites, whatever, it's egg whites. But that little bit of that color they put into there, and that little bit of that thickening agent they put into there makes all the difference because it makes it work and look like using whole cracked eggs. And, and just to be clear, so that means that not every food coloring or you know where they make the food look a little bit different or you know, feel a little bit different. It's not all bad. No. If it gets, yeah. hey, look, if it's getting, you need egg whites because it makes you feel like you're having whole eggs, 
in my my book, that's a win. We serve egg beaters here uh, in the morning. We could have an, an egg white omelet. You could have an egg beater omelet, you know, or scrambled, whatever it may be. And people really are like, well, I thought that was whole eggs the whole week, chef. Uh, like, you, you know, hundred, like, I, I had no idea. I can't tell you how many times when I speak to the guests in my office when we do the one-to-one -one counseling that they'll, they'll, you know, I ask them like, well, while you've been here, what what have you been eating? And they'll say, well, I have the I have the egg omelet. Not the white one, but the yellow one, and <laughs> and so they literally think that they're eating eggs, and they, and and they say, I really, I really don't like egg whites, but but I but I'm okay doing the eggs, yeah. And I'm and I and I just kind of start chuckling a little bit, and I and then I tell them the truth. I said, actually, when you eat the egg beaters, you are actually eating egg whites, like 99, percent and it's just the visualization we're used to seeing yellow eggs. That's what we want. So. It, it, even if it's not that, we still trick ourselves into believing and they don't believe me. I'm like, listen, I promise you, ask the chef what he put. There's egg beaters and they're egg whites. They are not eggs. I promise you that they just look like eggs and they're like, oh my God, I guess I like egg beaters. And I said, I and look, guess that you do. And and, 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 and karate, like, is it the worst ever to have a, a yolk once in a while? I mean, look, it depends on your cholesterol, right? I mean, once in a while, I might have a yolk in my house. I buy whole eggs. You know, I don't. I try to use more egg beaters for the most part. From you scrambled or omelet, but once in a while, I might I might do like a poached egg or something like that. Right? The other day, I'll tell you a funny thing about visually. I just because the price of eggs are going up, I, I noticed that the Publix eggs I usually buy uh, were almost the same price now as like the Happy Egg Company, which is promoting themselves as these real bright, sunny yolks. I'll tell you what, it was it was like almost damn near fluorescent. I mean, this thing was like Oh really? It, what do you it, think it, they put in there? Well, it is just the feed, I guess, that they said that they give to the to the chicken that makes them that's what it said. But I mean it was it was very it was very appealing looking. It wasn't like turning me off, but it was just very bright. I was right. like, wow, I cracked the egg and I never and I and I read about them before. I read about this company. I was like, you know, attack with it. Let me let me let me buy it. I'd say I cracked one open. I was like, it was, like, it was super bright, you know. So, but but that might trigger people to say that must be better because it's right. brighter. It must be a, a cleaner egg in some way, right? I mean, maybe it's just what they're feeding them. I, I you know, that's I what, don't that's know, what but I it's also when you said that, it made me think of salmon. You know Same how thing. Yeah. right, like the the, the wild darker, salmon. Yeah. It 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 actually is not as pretty to look at. It's a little bit darker. And then some other salmon you'll see in the case, and it's just like this beautiful piece, and it's really, really like pinkish reddish, and it look, and that's the one that you want. But at the end of the day, it might not actually be the healthier one because the wild one is is what it is. It wasn't contrived to be right. anything. Right. So that that would be one time I might say that the aesthetically looking one may not always be the healthier one, but um, most of the time it seems to work out. But I do find that very interesting. Is that people. Um, if they know one salmon is healthier than the other, they might still want to go for the one that looks a little bit prettier because it just in their mind, it must be better because it, it looks like it's it's healthier because it's prettier. So something to think about as well. And I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, use what works for you, whether it's a farm raised fish or wild fish, honestly, I mean, it's at fish. least it's fish. It's and fish. at least you're eating fish or eating meat. dark, you know, chicken thighs or something like that, or, 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 or using some ground beef or something like that. You know, you have to realize, I mean, the, those, 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 those things are going to be higher in saturated fat cholesterol overall than using a, a leaner protein, animal protein like fish. You know, if right. you're going to use fish here, we try to stay away from the shellfish, but you can certainly use those cleaner fishes. It's not fishes, a bad choice, you know, right? Halibut, mahi, wahoo, snapper, bronzino. There's tons of good fish you can have. Of course, snapper, uh, excuse me, salmon's one we serve here every single day as an option. But we actually do use a farm-raised salmon. That's the only farm-raised fish we use. And the reason being is because we use it as an option every single day. And right. it's Faroe Island farm-raised uh, Scottish salmon. And that's a particular variety that, you know, it's about $13 a pound. We pay wholesale on it. So it's not, you know, cheap by any means. But there's better quality farm-raised fish that has a, a, a better, you know, how it's, how it's raised, how it's harvested, everything like that. And I'll tell you what, I mean, look, whatever you're getting your, your proteins from, just try to incorporate more healthier dishes overall. And, of course, of course, more Colors flavor, the rainbow. more color. But not artificially colored, naturally colored. This carrot right here, this beautiful orange, that's beta carotene. That's what we got here. So when you're thinking about your colorful foods, try and think about foods that come from nature. They're naturally colorful. They're gonna do your body good. Something that comes from the outside, we don't know what that's gonna do to our body, but possibly not doing our body good. Anyway, always great hanging out with you, Chef. You too, Kara. Take care. To the next time.
Thank you for listening to the Healthier Everyday Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. If you're interested in learning more about the Pritikin Longevity Center and how the physician-led team of wellness professionals have been helping people for almost 50 years, visit Pritikin.com. That's P-R-I-T-I-K-I-N.com. Thank you.